Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today I want to talk about, oh, you know, once a week I do a show with Mike Cavalli, who lives in Austria over in Europe. He's in Vienna. Um, last night he asked me a very important question. And that question was, when I was floating above my dead body, back in 2001 when I died, could I move around and go anywhere in the house? So, first of all, I've got a diagram of what I drew that night. So here's my diagram. I died here in the toilet. And you walk down here around the walk-in robe. You come back into the master bedroom. And you go out into the living room. And this is where I found myself floating. Here's the front door of the house, by the way. So I was floating here, yet my body was way over there. Did I do that intentionally? Did I have a thought process where I decided, with my own free will, that I was going to be floating in that living room? So now we've got to go over to my book, Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven. You can see how thick it is. I promote this all the time and I love doing excerpts. So today I'm going over to page 35, which is where I've got the same diagram of where I was. That's where my dead body was. That's where I found myself floating. And here's my chapter on floating. So during this process, if you want to call it a process, because it was one aspect of my event. I was talking about how there was no gravity and how I wasn't scared and where I was. So here we are on page 38. I say where I was, my head was only inches from the ceiling. The ceiling was a 12 foot ceiling and my physical body, body is five foot seven. So I was about six and a half feet higher than if my feet had been on the ground. Um, so I was up higher, okay, because it's a 12 foot. So I'm generally about six foot up. So now I'm like six foot above myself because it was a 12 foot ceiling. Another thing that was important, prominent was that I knew I had no physical body at this time. I actually did not care that I was not breathing. So how long was I actually there for floating? I remember sitting on the toilet. I remember going to sleep. Next thing I know, I'm in the fog stage. So how long is that fog stage for? It's like closing your eyes and then you open your eyes and you're in a totally different country where you can't feel yourself move or locate elsewhere. Okay? So I'm in the living room. Now, in my medical files, and I'll show you my medical files, this is how thick my medical file is because um, this is all my um, files from when I died. Okay, so I'll just pick it out. So people want to see these, so I'm happy to show how I died. Okay, so here's my request for the information, and here is all my medical forms. Okay, this is all from the Cabarrus Hospital over in North Carolina. Okay, so, oh gosh, it's heavy, <laughs> look how thick it is, okay, alright, so I'll tell you how I know that I was floating for 45 minutes, I was floating above the chair, in the living room, there's a chair here, and I was in the corner, I saw, first of all, I saw my ex-husband, he ran across from here to the front door, he opened the front door, and he let in two male paramedics. They, in my records, are called the BLS, Basic Life Support Crew. So they came in, they quickly went through into this part, and I knew that they were going around there to me, okay? It would have been minutes, minutes later, upturned some more people. <laughs> they came in the front door, 
And once again, my ex came out and he was there. And this time we had firemen. We had a sheriff. And there was somebody else there in some other uniform. I don't know what that uniform was. These people, now what's very, very important here, these people that were standing in the living room where I was watching from, they never went in to where my body was. They never were um, close proximity. So if I had opened my eyes, if I was awake, I would never have known these people were in the house. That's important to say here, right? Because the people here, how could I possibly see them when you've got to go into the bedroom, around a corner, then up another corner to there? I may have been able to hear them talk, but it would have been very soft and muted because they don't yell when there's someone that's sick in a house. And also, how did I know their names? How did I know what their uniforms look like? How did I know what their physical bodies look like? Right, today I've got long straight hair. How would, how would I know what colour hair they had if I had not been standing here, so floating here, where I'm watching them only three feet in front of me? So that's an important aspect to know here because I named every single person that was here. So a short while later, because I was not wearing a watch, I wasn't looking at a time, short time later, two more people turned up. They were paramedics. They turned up, they had a defibrillator and a huge bag of medical equipment. In my medical files, it says that they turned up 10 minutes after the first people that turned up. They were called the ASL, advanced, oh, A A L S. sorry, I am dyslexic, dyslexic. Um, ALS is the advanced life support crew. So they turned up 10 minutes past that. I saw that occur. In my medical files, it says that the B life support, the basic life support crew, they were in the house for 45 minutes. I saw them come in, the first crew. I saw the second lot of people with the sheriff and the fire department. I saw the third lot of people come into the house, the um, advanced life support crew. And then I saw them that they were still talking to my ex here in the lounge room. They were discussing stuff and they had clipboards writing stuff down, making notes, etc. Um, and it was a short time after that, a <laughs> short time after that, that I saw them bring me out on a trolley. I saw them bring the trolley in, by the way. I should have said, said that. So they went out of the house and they brought in their gurney. And I saw them bring out the gurney and I was on the gurney. And as they were walking across in front of me, I was looking at myself. I could see myself on the um, on the gurney, the trolley. I didn't look good. My hair was... Now, this is very, very interesting. My hair was all... If you've ever watched Friends, Ross Geller, played by David Schumer or whatever his surname is, the character of Ross, if you look at his hair, it's always got like that gel stuff in it, right? Like slick stuff. That's what my hair looked like, but not like combed like Ross Geller on Friends. It was all mishy. It was all mishy, like someone had just gone through it with their fingers. So I was looking at my hair and thinking, whoa, what have they put in my hair? It's like, well, take that back. I didn't say what did they put in my hair. I actually thought, what did they do with her hair? Because when I was there floating, I did not have any connection at all to who was on that gurney. It could have been any person on the planet that they were pushing past me. I didn't have any emotion. There was no emotion. I wasn't scared, upset, concerned. Oh my God, what are they doing with me? There was no me in this at all. Okay. So in my medical file, which is here again, there is a report in there where they talk about, up here somewhere, so you see there's all these reports, right? Probably that one. Um, they, they have all these like time zones in there in my report. And they said that the first B, 
but um, basic life support crew were in the house for 45 minutes now that's very interesting that I got that because I saw them I saw them come in I saw the others come in then I saw the advanced crew come in I saw them in with well I didn't see them in with me because I was here but I saw all the interaction here in the in the living room then I saw them bring me out on the gurney and when they all left they shut the door and locked it so I was sitting there was floating and I watched them all leave and then my ex left also and he locked the front door so during that time as per what Mike said last night could I move around no I couldn't I had a few times that I remember I was floating there now as I picture myself back there this is the beauty of NDEs because it's like it happened yesterday it is so vivid it's right here in my memories it's it's like it just happened like even this morning it's like a memory that just happened like this morning even though it was 21 years ago because my event was in 2001 and it's now 2022 so okay I was up above the chair and I could see the front door and I could see them walking across in front of me into the bedroom and there were times when I tried to get down and I was trying to move forward to get up to where the men were all talking of and I didn't know what I wanted to say to them though I didn't want to say oh my god look what he's done to me I didn't want to say oh my god what are you doing for me in the other room there was none of that because I had no association or concern about it at all it was so separate okay separate is the word so I could not move from where I was I could not move down I could not move up I could not go to the left or to the right I could not turn okay I could not squat because when I looked down which seemed so normal I had no feet I had no feet I had I saw my knees but somewhere between my knees and my ankle it sort of just dissolved into nothing there was no like amputation part where you can say yep that's where it stopped it sort of just dissolved into nothing down towards my ankles so it did not feel weird none of that felt weird it felt normal so during that 45 minutes because it is verified in my medical file that I was float um, that I was um, that the crews were in the house for 45 minutes the biggest part of this all was that when I woke up I mentioned names and I described those men who were never in the toilet where my body was yet I saw them all in the living room and I knew what they were saying and where they were standing because I told many many people about it when I first woke up in hospital um yeah so there you go guys I was there for 45 minutes and that's when it got really interesting like floating is here in my book that's on page 35 and look how much is after that <laughs> so if you do want a copy of this it comes in a it comes in a hard copy and it also comes as a PDF it's 369 pages long um, so there are two ways to buy it PDF or hard copy the link is below if you do want a copy of my book um, that link also takes you to where I've got my ghost book yay um, so I hope that this has clarified something a little bit more about what happened to me in my event guys um, thank you so much for watching it's an honor that I share this with you all um, I'm so humbled <laughs> you know why me that's what I say every single day why did this happen to me for um, but ultimately they knew obviously that I was going to talk about it and I've got the guts and the strength to talk about it because it was highly stressful for me and traumatic okay all right so I hope that that's clarified and as usual I love you all and I'll talk to you all again soon okay bye
To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.